So let's turn it over to you and uh, see what you have to share in response to what we have just uh, given you to think about and consider. Um, please state your names loud and clear when you speak to us and uh, we're quite intrigued with finding out what your concerns are, where you may have difficulty, what area you would like a little more clarity on and understanding. And if we know, we will certainly offer insight. And if we do not have um, perspective to share, we will let you know and pass on it. It is rewarded. It is the part of the self that wants to obey be obeyed, that wants to be recognized, that wants to achieve, that wants to say, I did, look at me, I wrote this many books, I traveled this many places, I know this much information, etc., 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 all fine and dandy. But what's it connected to? And what's the purpose? The purpose comes through play. And we'll tell you a very easy way to allow those play frequencies to open for you. It's quite simple. You separate your jaw and you relax your tongue. The old yoga techniques, yes? When you separate your jaw and you relax your tongue, you immediately shift your brain waves from higher beta frequency or conscious down into the bridge, we call it, or the carrot bridge or alpha. And once you get into a slower vibrational frequency, you then tap into your own inner knowledge. This is what all meditation and yogas and all sorts of things are all about. It's learning what buttons to push on the body to get it to work. You know how to push the car buttons, the computer buttons, but the body still boggles you. So if you can learn that it is rejuvenating and it is enhancing to play, mindlessly, sillyly, you will gain your health and your freedom. Because when you laugh and when you play, you reinforce your immune system. When you sit in front of videos, TVs, DVDs, whatever these things are called, all the letters, numbers, digital TV, is that what it is? High definition, whatever. Um, you shut off your, your flow of creativity. And you are allowing other forms of creativity to come at you. Your duty is to create yourselves, to make special time to create, to become the living artiste and yet not lose the home station, to be productive as well. So play is essential. And in the next number of years, there's going to be a huge turnaround in what you consider important it is quite obvious you are in economic dire straits and uh, um, it is we would not put too much credibility or trust in in your politicians or your Federal Reserve chairmen or any of these people they are not going to say to you whoa folks looks like bad news coming down the pike they are going to say, late breaking news, here we go, the economy is going to, oh, one tenth of one percent is a little higher. Yes, it's going to be okay. They're not going to let you know that these things are uh, crashing and crumbling and beyond their control. And for some of the global elite, they want society to crash and crumble. And we will say this to you, what could be in it for you? On some level, when you all dream together as the world, when the world dreams together, the world says, hmm, how are we going to get out of this big material mess we are in? We keep buying and buying and building more and there's no place to put the junk and we have to ship the junk to other countries to get rid of our garbage and we have now nuclear waste we don't know what to do with and we have so much stuff and stuff and we are buying more and more stuff. If we don't buy stuff then the economy is going to collapse. What's going on? The economy is going to collapse and it's going to disengage you from this massive treadmill of material consumerism. These next few years are going to be shocking for many, many people who have not, have not put their built-in shock absorbers on. You understand? We are giving you forewarning that you are here for spiritual development while enjoying the material world. But you must balance your way through the material world and the very best rule you can make for yourselves is never do something that you cannot afford. 
mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and economically. If you can't afford it, guess what? Don't get in debt for it. House and an auto, that's about the only thing. Because it is a deficit of energy. And look what has happened in the last eight years or seven years of, of political turmoil. Your debt has been increased by trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars. So there's going to be a big pullback energetically. And um, everyone's going to find themselves um, modifying. Many areas of the world are, especially let's talk about the United States, because this is where most of you come from, uh, you are going to have severe water shortages. Water is one of your most prized resources. And yet how often do people just watch it go down the drain? How often do people open the tap and offer a simple prayer of thanks? Oh, thank you, water. And some of the greatest blessings that you have, you take for granted. And part of the experiment has gone so far that you have lost consciousness as a people. So Chet's conference, Chet and Kalista's conference, and all the people that have come here to, to listen and to learn and to speak, you all want to change. But we'll tell you the truth, the changes that are going to be required are bigger than what you want to make or think that you can make. And yet there is a plan underneath that as the material world wavels and crumbles, there will be an implosion of consciousness, the enterprise and expansion of consciousness will have room then to blossom into your lives. Question? Joanne, Joanne yes? Duan, all right, Duan. Sorry if we did not hear them exactly. You mentioned earlier about dealing with a tyranny in your time or place or how you refer to it. Yes. Is there something that we can be doing to help with that? Because I believe your future is our future, am I correct? Yes, uh, even though it looks as if we are in the future, it is all simultaneous. And our, let's say, your past is our past as well. So we are all deeply connected. What can you do about it? Well, let's say you are doing right now. Think of all the people around the planet who are watching high-definition TV right now and don't want to know. All right? Billion, maybe? Not quite, but quite a few up there, even if they have the old models. And yet, we said earlier that the power of your biology is far more powerful than any technology. And that will be demonstrated very soon when solar activity and cosmic activity start knocking out satellites as if they are dominoes tumbling. And that will be a reality check for everyone. So when you invest your attention on something significant, then that is shifting the tide. When you know that you are only here for the world of peace, that you are not available for a nuclear reality, when you dream, that's, that's voting. You vote with your mind when you make these decisions. And in the dream state, you share these ideas and you meet with those in the world who want these things. It is not as if, let's say, you need to be hoping that the spiritual uh, revolution is going to take place. It is taking place. It's bigger than any of you can ever, ever, ever imagine. Yet it can only be moved by each individual. And each individual and their perceptions and their attitudes and attention is of utmost importance. So you are helping us right now. And the more you start to realize the power that you have inside to remember, to make a difference, to heal, to be one less person that is not saying, fix me, make me, do me, bail me out of this, uh, um, this uh, subprime mortgage thing, or give me free health care. I don't know how to take care of myself. That's all nonsense. You must all learn to take care of yourselves. Once you do that and you get that idea inside, then you lay out a frequency of what is possible. 
And it might be someone 800 miles away who wakes up from the dream and changes their life because you made a decision and you'll never meet them maybe. That's how it works. That's how it is all connected. And of course, when you make a decision here, it is going to ripple throughout the lines of time. Let's go off a moment on the lines of time. Wounded. You've all been wounded. You've all been through war. You all have bloodline connections to war. You have reincarnational experiences with war, with horror. In this lifetime, we are pretty certain that uh, most of you in this room are not at all for war or violence. You've made a commitment, not in this lifetime. You've laid down the sword. There are billions of you on the planet who would never pick up arms. Do you understand? And that presence is preventing many things from occurring. And when you choose not to perpetuate violence against another in order to get your way or to have your opinion supersede someone else's, you reach great spiritual maturity. And in so doing, you then pull other aspects of self around the lines of time out of war. So bear that in mind. Questions? Everyone's yelling at once here. It's so hard. Oh. Yeah, this is uh, Shane here. Um, I got a couple oh, of questions. Low, lower, please. Lower. What is your oh, name? Uh, my name's Shane. All right, a um, lower. Right. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, I have a couple of questions. The uh, first question is, um, can you tell me the metaphysical, archetypal, or even the personal significance of the number 33? And also, do you know the best remedy for what I like to call survival sickness, you know, the kind of sickness that pervades this kind of listless inundation of constant Wait, 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 wait. We are missing, 33 is a master number, of course. Yes. And, and double digits have vibrational frequencies, and basically they are used by churches, military secret societies, uh, and the numerical system, of course, is Arabic, as you well are aware, and the Arabs, of course, uh, are not giving a, a, a decent rap today or the credit that they have for remembering things across apocalyptic times. It was the Arabs who were quite highly evolved while the Western world was still rather barbaric in those terms. But there are frequencies of achievement and uh, uh, let's say that uh, for your own self or for anyone, um, it is up to you to remember it. But double digits are very powerful numbers uh, to use, and they are markers along the lines of time that remind you of something. And they are not owned, let's just say, necessarily by the Masons or any particular organization. Now, your second question was vibrational funk or something like this? Uh, survival sickness. A survival remedy. sickness? Right. The, the Basically, uh, you what know, is this? We have not heard this term before. Well, it, it's uh, I guess you can kind of liken it to the constant inundation of, you know, images and and uh, stress that you take on as a result of merely living surviving into... rather than living. Obviously, you know, in other words, people are so constantly consumed with being consumed that right. You know what I'm talking All about. Right. So how did one deal with this? Is this well, your question? What, what, yeah. What's the, uh, the the greatest remedy, at least that you know of, to get out of that? Attitude, attitude, attitude. An attitude is another word for beliefs. And in order to change your beliefs, you make an intention. We know this sounds quite flippant and quite uh, concise, but this is how it works. So if you see that um, people are, are getting into these survival funks and these lower vibrations because of all the stuff that's out there. Think about this. You are all creators of your reality. You create the mass environment. You create the weather. You create your own individual environment, your bloodline, your experiences, your intelligence or lack of. And so therefore, Ask yourself, why am I living and helping to uh, participate on a mass level in these times of, of, of survival with comfort? You all go home, you have a bed mostly, you have food with no problem, you have flush toilets, you have warm, warm water, all of which would have been high privilege in, in, in something that you could not even imagine in other lines of time. So you have certain basics. It's where you choose to put your attention. 
Now, yes, this stuff is out there, and our vehicle, too, gets into despair sometimes, and, uh, and uh, she has learned uh, uh, not to overstimulate herself with all of these ideas and beliefs that are being thrown at you, and so what you to do to, to deal with this is develop a, a sense of sovereignty and make space for yourself. Own your space, first of all, and make a declaration that no one can own your space but you, your space being your body, and that you are grateful for having a body and being in it, and that it is your intention as you move through this ride of life that this is what you are available for. And you can learn to sort of allow uh, others to, to play out what they need to play out, to be of the world but not necessarily caught up in all of that. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, the more time you spend in nature, away from busy lifetimes, the easier it is going to be. Because nature, again, conforms to your identity. When you walk through the woods, each of you, the woods or the forest or the desert responds differently to each individual frequency and the nature reach of vibrations. And then, f so um, let's begin now. Sure. Who would like to ask sure. the first sure. question this afternoon? Dennis. Dennis, all right. Loud and clear, Dennis. What is your question? I have a question on... on uh, Ooh, what is all that crackling? On one of your favorite topics... Um, over the years that I have a friend who is totally addicted to TV and I totally see, addicted to TV yeah and I noticed ever since I, I have lunch with him maybe once or twice a year and I noticed ever since he got high-definition TV and he doesn't understand why I don't like TV at all and don't care about it but you know, and he's trying to impress me with his high definition TV. And I noticed since he got it, he seems to be physically going downhill uh, rapidly. And I'm. Which is a good observation that you have made. So, um, my question is and there's a huge push on high definition TV, so what more are they able to do to people through the high definition TVs? All right, good question, Dennis, and interesting that it's the first question. It's always quite significant to see what topics are ready to be addressed. Well, see if you can stop squirming, you TV watchers out there. Uh, don't judge yourselves. It's not about judgment. It is about mindfulness to observe your own behavior and your attachment to it and your beliefs that are behind the behavior. There is... Uh, a steadfast investment in subversive technologies. And you will have speakers this weekend who will go into uh, ooh, minute details and have specialized in understanding these sorts of things. Uh, generally, uh, we will say this. Those, there has been a long-term battle for who can control the world. This has been going on for eons, eons and eons and eons. Why do beings want to control the world? Because of the value, value of the library and the genetics that are stored here and what is stored inside the genetics. Those who control the planet, some of them, in minimum numbers, are fully aware that you are in a time of acceleration, of spiritual uh, uh, advancement and uh, they, have using tech, they are using technology to divert you from your own discoveries. And not only to divert you, but to make money in the process. So monies can be made on high-definition TV. Someone pointed out to our vehicle recently that it was the number one biggest hot must-have uh, uh, item last Christmas. That, that was what everybody, and many people, got uh, in debt to buy them. This is uh, part of um, marketing, conditioning, programming. Uh, it's what, one of the reasons your world is in a mess today, that people have become so uh, addicted to uh, what someone tells them they have to have, the media. The media is uh, designed today to divert you from spiritual awareness. That is simple way of saying it. 
Other aspects of media are designed to disrupt the body, particularly weaken your immune system, so that as you get ill, uh, you then uh, contribute your hard-earned monies, or easily earned monies, to the uh, so-called death care system that passes for health on your planet. And, uh, of course, if people died from technology instantly, there wouldn't be the opportunity to, let's say, garnish more money. Do you understand? So, and another perspective is this. There are beings who feed off of energy. One would say they are non-physical from one point of view. And uh, some of your world leaders have deep liaisons with these sorts of beings, and so they feed them energy. At the high risk end, uh, um, they would perform what you call ritual sacrifice of humans or animals or things of this nature. And perhaps uh, some of the historical timelines are uh, ruminating around where you can remember that certain societies did kill people in sacrifice to the gods. Today, uh, it's not openly accepted to do human sacrifice, so it is disguised now in what you call war. These vibrations, whether you're watching them on a high-definition TV or whether you are seeing them in movies or whether you are experiencing it firsthand, they are horrific. They are full of pain and fear. And that when the human body turns emotional dial to pain and fear and anxiety, there is a frequency that goes out. And there are beings who uh, rush in to feed off of those frequencies. High-definition TV, like your cell phones, like your iPods, uh, anything you plug in your ears or put to your ear all the time, uh, you have high risk of receiving frequencies that will control your behavior. Another important uh, point of view here is that when you watch TV and, and work on the computer, because there is no image technically on the screen, and you are viewing a stream of electrons, so to speak, the mind shuts down. And it moves from beta, which our vehicle said you would, what we call the P or higher frequencies, it drops down into what is called delta, or sleep state, or the potato, four cycles or seconds per less. And also, when you are in watching TV, no matter what you are watching, your brainwave frequencies move to delta. So it is a highly programmable state. High-definition TV not only uh, throws you into that frequency, as all TVs have done, but now they are inserting very subversive programs. For what? To modify people's behavior. Remember, remember, if you can remember, in the 1950s, 55, 56, 57, something along there, uh, a man, a behavioral psychologist named uh, Jose Delgado, was able then to prove uh, that he implanted uh, electrodes in or chip in a bull and then had a little box and uh, pushed a button and the bull ran towards him and he pushed a button and the bull stopped. This was a major turning point to determine what would happen in the years ahead. You are now in that era. Our recommendation is put the TVs on the curb and say, free mind control machine. You're not, you're not thinking that's very funny, do you? But one day from the future, you will. One day from the future, it will be seen what the electronics and technology are doing to the human body. All right, Dennis? The, um, as opposed to the old-fashioned watch that goes around, uh, the digital watch I've heard is a lot worse that people wear all the time. Yes, it, especially also if you have a clock next to your bed that is a digital clock. Uh, 
these things create a frequency that disrupt uh, your natural brainwave cycles. If you want to uh, entrain with who you are and strengthen who you are, the very best way is to get out in nature with no sounds to accompany you, just the creatures. You don't need music. You don't need all these things. Certainly they are an important uh, part of life, which, as Dennis was saying, his friend became addicted. When you become addicted to something, you lose your mind. And when you lose your mind, something else can come in and possess you. Our vehicle said to you earlier, she said, stay in your body this weekend. Actually, it's best if you stay in your body throughout life. Because if you vacate the body because of some trauma or dissociation or some lack of liking what is going on, and everyone does it, everyone does it all the time. You just don't notice it. You haven't been trained to learn how to observe yourself. But if you vacate the body often enough because you don't like it, then inevitably something comes in to take over. And this subject is a hot ball of wax, hot potatoes, the idea of entity possession. Yet it is as old as the planet in understanding. Who has another question, please? Eric, Eric all right, what is your question? Welcome. Oh, hi. Um, I have the game board set up in my room, and I put pieces on Who is there. this? Gary. Oh, Gary, we thought you said Eric. Gary, all right, we recognize your vibration. You are working with the game board. Yeah, and I... And if we may add something here. Uh, our vehicle has a game board up here, and... Uh, we have su suggested that this game board is a map for everyone for navigating the multiverse. If you would proceed now, Gary. So I got the idea to put pieces on the game board, a certain amount of pieces. Such as? Crystals, people's names, gold, um, so you're playing water from the, Gan from the Ganges, a ring from Tibet, uh, owl's claws different things that I got a hit to put them on, different squares, and I muscle tested or doused to see which square these things would actually be on, which column, how they connected. But I, I was wondering if you could give me some clues, like what does that do when I put the pieces on? And then I have ah, another question. There is the doing and then there is the understanding of the doing, yes? Right. And many of you have been doing for quite a few years with crystals and dowsing and, and all sorts of things. And you can keep quite busy doing. But if you don't link the doing to the knowing and the understanding, then what can you do? At, at best, you have a good time. At worst, you get yourself in big troubles. Now, the game board. Quite common, more common than you realize, more powerful than any of you realize. Ubiquitous around the planet, found everywhere. In some of the oldest ancient cultures, the Dogon, for example, they use the black and red and white uh, checkered game board, and they claim it's one of their oldest, most revered, cherished artifacts. Again, a map for navigating the multiverse. So what is Gary doing when he takes this black and white board and instead of playing checkers or chess, he starts to put on objects of significance, things that mean something to him or that have uh, come from places around the planet. From, from his experience now, because you all have, if you've played with the game board, it will apply to all of you, but it will, we'll use Gary as an example. What he would be doing in his now, in his 21st century now, is he would say, oh, I like this owl claw. Oh, water from the Ganges. I remember how powerful it was to go there. Gold, wow, gold has got some inherent value. We, uh, gold is the love frequency. It is the veins of the earth. It carries and conducts all sorts of information. What he would be doing is in his current gariness, he would be selecting things that were important to him in this now, but that really would be bridge artifacts across time. So what you are doing is moving things around, and on some level, your neurology is collect connecting with other incarnations, if you choose to use that word, of yourself, other realities where you are just as viable and just as alive. 
You may say, well, I've had a regression and I saw I was in India uh, in, in 777 uh, and uh, uh, how could I be alive now? That's already gone. None of these realities are gone. This is what the big quanandrum and the revolution of science is all about. As the scientists break ranks and start to uh, explore what's going on, they realize everything is multidimensional, concurrent, simultaneously unfolding. And so one act is simply the other side of another act. So you are getting in touch with other aspects of self, Gary, uh, that in time, in the next few years, by 010, around then the big revolution kicks hold on the planet, um, the revolution again is of mind. And your mind will become quite crystal clear as to what all of these effects are about. We would say uh, to have reverence, and um, say if you want to find out something more, if you have the water from the Ganges on one square or whatever you have, um, put your hand on it at some time and make clear intention and say what's going on in that reality that is so significant that I, 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 I honor it or I place it with special playing power in my now. You see, first you're going to play with the symbols, the, 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 the sigils of these times. And then as the energy changes your nervous systems, and it is changing everyone quite, quite rapidly, as that energy rewires you from inside on a subatomic level, there will be a time when, like a button is pushed, a comet streaks across the sky. It will act as a signal on a very, very deep level, and people will raise to another level. Being that you've just had a comet streak through the sky and uh, seem to implode to be larger than the sun now, we would say these are quite auspicious times. And that the, can be interpreted as a signal to fire codes of consciousness across the planet without your P or conscious mind having any bother at all about it. All right, Gary? Yeah, thank you. Yes, Who is it? Yes, Bud? Wesley. Wesley. All right. Wesley, what's your question? You're speaking in English. I understand Polish language. How come uh, people... Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. We, we talk about time, all the time, about time, time, time. What does that mean, the time? I would like to find out what time is it? You would like to find out what it means, time. This Just the, the, the word time. All right. This is a very, very good question. If, as a spirit in a biological being, you were aware of all of the times that you have lived and everything that was going on and every bit of land vibrated, all the different things that happened on it, how could you have an experience? Who would you be? Time is a local custom. It allows you to encapsulate an experience, to build something unique and to experience life. Spirits come into the body primarily, primarily for love. That's what really the reason is. As a spiritual being, and you're all spiritual beings, and everyone on the planet is a spirit, but when you take the body on, there's something that happens here that is beyond richness. The frequency of love is sought after throughout the multiverse. And Earth has its own unique richness, flavor of love. So each segment of time allows a separation, a compartmentalization of experience. Within that compartmentalization of time, different eras or civilizations are built, and the raw materials of creativity can be expressed uniquely. 
whether in Poland or South Africa or the depths of the Congo or Gambon or Morocco or here in Tempe. And you take it all for granted, and yet it is rich beyond compare because each reality had to be built by mind, by activity, by belief. And you see, when you are not in the body and you are spirit, and you can, uh, if you gain this capacity, and you must earn these capacities, just because you are not in the body does not mean you are going to be a brilliant spirit. Everything must be earned, dear friends. And you earn it by showing whether you uh, rever it or not, whether you cherish it. And people who cherish money, well, they're they will accumulate monies, but you know the expression, you can't take it with you. But you do take your consciousness with you. That is what you take with you. So when you are not in a body and you can look at the various versions of self that are segmented in different aspects of time, those experiences, individually and collectively, through family, through culture, through marriage, they all contribute to some great expression of creativity. That's what you are doing. You are always expressing your creativity. You may say, well, I'm not expressing creativity. I'm struggling to pay the bills. That is an expression of creativity because if you are struggling to pay the bills, then you have a belief inside that says, I must struggle. And yet you have the free will as a spirit to come into a body and take on any beliefs you want. And then experience the, the, the conveyor belt of energy. You think of something and then it comes back to you. You set an idea for yourself, I'm always slower, or I'm brilliant, or I'm lucky as can be. You hypnotize yourselves all the time with these ideas. So collectively, all these iso isolations of time are going to come together in the nanosecond, and time will appear to fall away from about 2010 onward. In a few months, Pluto, one month, two months, Pluto will be about two moons from now, we'll be moving into the sign of Capricorn. Capricorn um, rules the body, as, let's say the spine and the skeletal form, and also time. Pluto disrupts things. Pluto brings out the truth from the underworld. So one could say from January until, oh, 2024, something like this, uh, as Pluto is in Capricorn, you will see a whole restructuring of time, an understanding of time. And the trick is, is that you must never lose the home station, the current now. The value, the identity that you have, the country that you come from, the parents that you have, the, the you that you are. But it's only one version of you. It's a costume. Truly, it's a costume that you are wearing. And just as you can change costumes and wardrobes, you can, in this lifetime, change your beliefs about what you think you are. That's why we are here this weekend. Because this is a very, very powerful point in time. Pluto has just gone over the galactic center two weeks ago. Two weeks, three weeks ago, Pluto made a final pass to the galactic center. If you understand the, the logistics of space, you know that the Milky Way galaxy is gigantic and that the galactic center ooh, is perhaps from your counting over 30,000 light years from where you are right now. And, if, uh, and that is very, very, very far away. Pluto is very close to you compared to uh, where the galactic center is. And you know darn well that you cannot even see Pluto in the sky. It's very, very far away. But Pluto lined up with the galactic center, and it does this every 250 years. So wherever you were, October 26th, 27th, and 28th, and whatever you were doing, uh, you imprinted this next phase of development, of revolutionary change, of truth and creativity with whatever you were doing. So now, just a few weeks later, 
we are here because we want to remind you of the ripeness and the opportunity of energy and to do something with it, to be profound and to have courage. And that courage must always include speaking the truth. And as you speak the truth in this time, it will affect all the other times that you are connected to. Question. Oh, we have lots of popcorn popping here. Good. Let's hear from a lady. Okay, Who thank is you. What is, what is your name? Mary. Mary. Oh, it loud and clear. Mary. All right. Um, in our physical bodies, we are able to dream. Of what importance is that? And can spirits dream, or do they not need to? Oh, good questions today. We are quite impressed with, your, uh, with the, the subjects that you are deeming important. You do dream. And in the model our vehicle shared with you that we have used to help you understand yourselves, the garden of the mind, it is in the potato or the unconscious mind uh, where you dream. These are when you are in four cycles per second or less. When the brain wave activity slows down, you go into dreaming. Dreaming actually builds realities. Dreaming is like being in spirit. In physical reality, if you want to check something out, uh, it might be a lot of work to, to say, well, do I want this house or this house or this house or this house? Well, I'll build them all and move in all of them and see which one I want. Relatively difficult to do, yes? You can do it with clothes. You can go shopping and say, all right, I'm going to buy a new wardrobe and I'll, I'll put all these things on. I'll try them on, so to speak, and select the one that I want. Dreaming is somewhat similar. You literally put on an experiment with different versions of reality. You transcend time in the dream state. And of course, your behavioral scientists are very well aware of this, and this is why uh, they have occupied your time for the last 50, 60 years with TV. Taking over the time of creativity, which of course when you watch TV again, you are in the similar brainwave frequencies that you are when you are dreaming and sleeping. Now, dreaming helps you to choose reality. Uh, you test things out in, in dream state that you may not end up manifesting in reality. One could say dreaming is where you go shopping for reality. Dreaming is where you meet your neighbors. Uh, dreaming is where some of you confront uh, popes, priests, and presidents, and uh, people of power, and you have no problem walking up to them and say, hey, what do you think you're doing? You're messing up the planet. It is a place where many of you lead, where in waking life you would be quaking to lead. Do you understand? You are more outspoken. Dreams are very fascinating, and another important thing to understand about dreams is that they are not necessarily something that is sequential. You may interpret them as sequential, particularly if you write them down. However, when you dream and you uh, then awaken from those dreams, you think, oh, I had a dream and it was this, this, and this, and this, and here's the story. And indeed, that dream will be laden with symbols, laden with clues uh, that have to do with uh, your psychic bloodline, meaning the issues that you are uh, working on throughout your reincarnational journeys. But also, they will be fragments of perhaps 10 dreams. You dream on levels. Uh, again, we use your terminology to help describe something that is beyond the terminology. But think of this way, an elevator. And you walk into a building and that elevator goes to 26 floors. And you decide for the heck of it because you have nothing else to do that you are going to go to every floor and get off. Do you understand? Walk around and get back on and go to the next floor. Dreaming is somewhat similar. If you have an issue that you want to resolve, um, you all go to sleep with issues. You understand? What am I going to do about this tomorrow? Fix the car, the kids, the money, the whatever. You all go to sleep with issues and you work those issues out. And if you would go to sleep with the idea to say, it is my intention that I am going to dream solutions to these events, then you would get far more miles out of your sleep and dreaming. 
And for those of you who have to take tests, it's an old trick that you say, ah, tonight I will take the test in my dreams, and in the morning I will ace it. You understand? You can set up these types of agreements with reality. They don't have to happen to you. So if you have an issue, for example, something very simple, or you're in between jobs and you want to find a job, and you are looking for employment, or maybe you are looking for a new place to live, you may have dreams, and you may dream on 26 levels, just like that uh, building with the 26 floors. And you may get off on each one of those levels and dream something about your particular issues on all those different levels. And then when you wake up, it's almost as if there is a, a compression of those issues. And then you wake up and you have what you remember to be a dream. And that dream is filled with keys that are showing you that you are working for solutions. Does it help you understand, Mary? Very good. Who else has a question? Ooh, all right. Let's hear from another lady now. We've had a few men. Who is it? Paula. All right, Paula. Um, just to piggyback what you were talking about creativity in the previous question. Yes, because this is Paula, the sand queen herself. <laughs> sand Let's call her the sand goddess. How is the that? sand goddess, yes. yes. Um, I have a concern. I mean, there's so much going on. There's a lot of intensity, a lot of seriousness. And I'm hoping the Palladians can come up, a comment on the power of creativity and play and that some of the greatest discoveries and some of the greatest solutions are creative solutions that come through means that we often don't tap into. And if you can comment on that, because I think balance is going to be extremely crucial, especially during this next phase of life. All right. Excellent question, Paula. Our vehicle has done therapies with Paula, and we and our vehicle do highly to be recommended. Not only is she an excellent facilitator, but what she is doing in her work play is to ask people to play, to play into knowledge. And when you play, when you are children, or a few weeks ago we had a big party in North Carolina and called it the Galactic Celebration Weekend, uh, sort of a prelude to 2012. Uh, and basically the weekend was organized uh, around a good time. Certainly learning was a part of it and following some agreements and, and working together. But basically it was about hilarity. It was about creativity. It was about music and laughter, all done spontaneously. And uh, after the people left, they said they had never laughed so hard in their lives. One woman said it was the best party she's been to in 250 years. <laughs> Our vehicle liked that comment. It was quite good. Uh, however, it is this ability to tap into the back garden that is so important. Remember, the P or the conscious mind is the part of the self that